Welcome back. New episode, new series in Art and Code. We're going to be looking at making crazy things with open frameworks. And the first of them is this, VHS Glitch Simulator. One of my favoriteest ever things is the noise inside a damaged VHS video cassette. So we're going to look at remaking this and follow as we go through a whole journey of porting this in open frameworks to iOS to publishing on the Apple App Store. new series of Art and Code, I'm going to be exploring pieces that I'm making and sharing the source code, talking about the inspiration, showing some of the building, and walking through the process of the decisions that I've made about making the kind of artwork that I have done, uh, hopefully giving you an insight, and also hopefully hearing about the stuff that you're making. So this one is about Glitchio. So I make Glitchio. You can download it for iPhone an iPad from the App Store, and I'd be really, really grateful. Please go download it, leave me a rating. If there are bugs, please tell me there are bugs and I'll fix them if I can. Glitchio runs, and from touch screen, you can change the latent space, the horizontal and vertical jitters with a single tap and double tap, you can freak the frame rate. And using the accelerometer, we can control color. You can download this right now and enjoy it yourself and just freak people the hell out when you're sat there watching static on your apparently broken phone and exploring some of the things that, honestly, this is machines talking to us. We just don't know what it is that they're saying to us yet, but this is machines talking to us. So the thing that I get really excited about or, uh, is, is randomness and noise. And this is actually noise straight from a damaged VHS video cassette. The video cassette is it's like this big old thing from the 1980s. I'll probably put a picture up here. And the video is encoded in, in an analog way. And when it's read by the tape machine, it means that when the tape gets damaged or the heads get dirty, trying to read, there's all this noise that comes in, and it comes in in these specific patterns. And there's something mesmerizing about it for me. And I started looking at it and thinking, <clears throat> what is going on with this noise? And it has a particular kind of pattern. This is not the static of an untuned television. It's actually coming from the mechanical way in which um, the data is read or the information is read from the, the iron filing particles on the tape. And it, it gives this certain kind of horizontal and vertical blocking that, that has some consistency and some rules. And we've looked at using things like Markov chains previously to try and um, link circumstance together rather than make complete randomness. And I was exploring this and going, what is it? What is it? So I started building it and I ended up with something that looks a little bit like this. And this is my version that I started exploring of the glitch. So I've built this in open frameworks and I built a little GUI. And what I can do is I can track these breaking of vertical lines and horizontal lines. And I started with saying, okay, let's build blocks. Let's take the whole screen as a grid. And what's going on is these horizontal blocks and vertical lines, and they, they randomly change between how fat they are and how thin they are and how many there are, and the black level, and also that there's some overlaying each other. So what I've built is something that makes grids on the screen and then randomly puts multiple passes to overlay the grids, and then randomly changes the width and the height and the frequency of the lines. And then I said, can we randomize that to make it jitter? And can we jitter the amount of steps that it makes down the screen? And then I realized that actually there's a little bit of color in here every so often. So what I wanted to do was add 
colored sparks so that randomly a certain amount of the boxes that I'm drawing start to become in color. And so I made a simple GUI and I can control this. And I realized actually this is far too consistent. It's running at 30 frames a second. So what I wanted to do was actually start freaking the frame rate. So now I can control the horizontal grid and the vertical grid, the number of passes that I'm making of drawing grids with opacity, an amount of color sparkling on the particles, and the ability to start juddering, speeding up and slowing down the frame rate. And if I get rid of the GUI, I've got beautiful, crazy randomness. So let's dive in and see exactly how I built this. So if you're interested, you can go and see Glitchio right now. It's available on the Apple Store, Glitchio. It's available for iPhone and iPad to download. And depending upon what kind of Mac OS you're running, I think this will also run on Mac M1 on the desktop. So you can run this on any desktop machine alongside iPhone and iPad. I'm building using Open Frameworks, openframeworks.cc. You can download for Mac, iOS, Linux, and ARM machines, which is amazing. I'm building this as a version on um, OS 10 on uh, Mac, and then I'm going to take the process of porting this and making it run on iOS on mobile phone. In my header file, I've added a number of variables to control the black amount, the speed of changing the black amount, the number of passes that I make as I'm running through drawing a block of, uh, of gray squares and then another block over the top and another block over the top to also control the percentage of color and the stripe range of how many vertical stripes the line may have and how often in the horizontal and in the vertical it's going to miss a line to try and make a grid. So having set up a bunch of variables about how often we want colored sparks to appear and this idea that we're going to take the whole screen and treat it as a grid of squares. What we're going to do is make a couple of loops. One to draw across, step down, draw across, step down, draw across, step down. Just like we were addressing an array of pixels and we've done all over the place. So in my draw loop, I set up a couple of things. Here I have an outer loop which says how many passes should I do over the whole screen? Given that we're going to draw semi-transparent rectangles all over the screen, we might draw once and show it, or we could draw a couple of layers to build up a, a transparency or um, a, a concentration of, of black and white that I'm drawing. Inside my loop, I have an X loop and I have an outer Y loop. So the Y loop is counting. There's an X loop inside it. And it's going to say start at zero. Start at the top of the screen. And then in the X loop, it says run all the way across the screen. So I'm counting integer X to the width of the screen. And then I'm incrementing my for loop with a random amount between 1 and the horizontal step range. So if I say, actually, make the horizontal step range just 1, it's going to count up very, very evenly in small increments. But if my step range is big, I can draw a block. And then there's quite a big random jump before I draw the next block. And every time it refreshes a screen, it's going to choose different amounts to jump across the screen. So it'll give me a random array of square blocks. And then I'm saying, if I want to use the black, set a random amount of my color. Now, 
with a random gray level and a random opacity. And if I've said use a spark color, then I actually instead set a random red, green, and blue and a random alpha for my drawing color, or I've set color, and then just draw me a rectangle at this X and Y position where I'm randomly jumping across and then I step down and randomly jumping across and step down to draw me a grid of random boxes. Draw me a box starting at X and Y of a random width with my stripe range and a random height for my stripe height range. And then we drop out of our X loop and we come up to our Y loop, having drawn the top line, and we step down again, Y plus equals in our for loop here. We step down anywhere between one and whatever we've set is our random vertical range. So if we set this random vertical range to be little, it'll draw me lots and lots of lines. If we set the vertical step range to be very high, it might randomly jump down and draw me very, very blocky, very coarse grid. And this is the center of it that I'm drawing across, 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 putting semi-transparent gray boxes everywhere of a random width and a random height, and then telling it to miss out lines or jump lines within random amounts. So I've got randomness inside randomness, and then I'm also saying, run this again a random amount of times, this number of passes. How many times are we going to fill the screen with boxes that are all semi-transparent to run over the top? And that's the center of it. And then if I want, I've made a simple GUI and a Boolean saying, if the Boolean GUI is true, then draw me the GUI and key pressed so I can toggle the full screen, show the GUI, and you can see the GUI that I've set up. I can set the black amount very high or very low. So this says, how often will the square that I'm drawing not actually appear? And then I can change my stripe range which is how big are these stripes going to be? So you can see they're very, very tall, very, very short. And then I can set my horizontal range. And if I increase both of these, you say I get very tall and very fat blocks, or very wide but very short blocks. So I get stripes. If I do it the opposite direction. I get very narrow but very tall, and any combination in between. And if I take a particular range and increase the number of passes here, I'm just drawing my random grids with one pass. And you can see very clearly individual semi-transparent gray boxes. And if I increase the number of passes. It's not drawing one lot, it's drawing two and three and five and now 20 separate overlays. And if I reduce the black amount, I get deeper and deeper noise because less of the blocks that I'm drawing are black and more are some gray in a semi-transparent manner. So I can have very, very dense with multiple passes. And change the size of the boxes to get these multiple different effects from multiple layers of semi-transparent boxes. And if I add in to say, yes, I want colored sparks, I switch it on with this toggle, I can then set the percentage of how many of these are going to be colored or not. From everything colored to barely colored at all. What I got here at this point is stable. 
But the randomness changes in time on the VHS cassettes, and that's what I was interested in evolving. So I added in this option to jitter, where I say, take this value, like the black amount or the number of passes. The number of passes here is set to 20, so it's doing multiple passes or individual single passes. And I said, okay, when I click this button, what I want you to do is every time we run a frame, change this frame rate. So this is randomly jittering the frame rate, and you see as it's firing random numbers into the number of passes, the slider is automatically updating by itself, and we get these multiple overlays. Every thousand milliseconds or every second, it'll change the number of passes, and you see this slider jittering much more slowly. So there's a little bit of stability in the randomness. And if I decrease the jitter speed, or the jitter delay, you can see almost every frame, every 40 milliseconds, it's changing the number of passes. And this jittering, I add it into the horizontal stripes. And again, I can change the jitter speed. So every second, it'll change the horizontal stripe amount. And also onto the step range. So in this one, we're changing the width. And again, I can jitter that. And the same with the sparks. And this overlay allows me to jitter the number of classes and the stripes and the width and the frame rate that give me, it's not VHS, but for me it's going in the same space. So this is what I built. And you can download it now from the iOS App Store. Details are down below. Please do. I'm going to wrap this video up here. The source code for this is available online. Next video, I'm going to go through how I took the code that's running on OS X, set it up for an iPhone, and how I pulled out data from the accelerometer and the process of pushing it on to the Apple iStore. I want to say thank you very much. I'm so excited. It's really, really lovely to be doing a new series of videos. I'm looking forward to developing more and exploring a whole range of artworks that are either built or in the works, sharing with you. As always, the source code will be on GitHub. Please do leave comments. Please hit the subscribe and let me know what you're thinking. And if you build anything inspired by this or are doing anything similar, let me know. I'd love to see what you're building. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of Art and Code.